Good morning. Welcome to another uh, first Saturday class here at the Pearson Street Garden. And we hold one every first Saturday and we have different topics throughout the year. And this time it's all about bees. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll get a little more housekeeping for you, though most of you know. Restrooms over here on my left. We also have uh, a lot of um, refreshments this morning from the refuge, all based on honey and the herbs that we have here at the garden. So mint and rosemary and anise and some of the other ones that are here. So um, I'm just going to let it let you take it away. Okay. And talk a little more, and everybody come up with questions as you're as you talk, right? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. First, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name's Connie Moore. I am a master beekeeper. I am the owner of Honey Hive Farms. Uh, we're based here in the valley, as well as a few other states. Um, the goal today is just to give you a quick introduction. Uh, to beekeeping uh, because we have placed a hive here on the property. Um, so uh, I do sometimes tend to talk a little quickly. Uh, so if I say something that doesn't quite jive, um, stop me right then and there so I can uh, explain it maybe in a different way. Or if you have questions, uh, feel free, interrupt me right then and there uh, so that we can get those answered for you as well. Okay, so this quick introduction to beekeeping is just a high level, if you get bees tomorrow, get you up and running, okay? All right, so uh, just housekeeping things for me as well. This observation hive, we do have live bees. We uh, do have a queen bee in there as well, uh, but it is safe and sound. They cannot get out of this observation hive, okay? So after the presentation, if you wanna come up and, and take a look, feel free, okay? So um, in beekeeping, uh, there are basic principles. Everything else is what works for you in your situation. So what a lot of people don't actually understand, there are actually three types of bees within a bee colony. You have obviously your queen bee. Uh, she is your most important. Uh, she is the biggest. Uh, she gets the best of the best food. Her responsibility is to lay eggs all day long. Any guesses as to maybe how many she might lay every day? Yes. <laughs> Uh, the estimates range from 1,500 to 2,500 eggs. Um, I've even heard 3,000 eggs every single day. All right. I know, cheating. Uh, no, she's a smart lady. Um, so in a healthy colony, we have one queen. Okay. And when I say colony, I am talking about something similar to this, a house or a hive, all the same thing. Okay. Um, you would have one queen and uh, you can have multiple boxes, okay, but one queen for all of that. The second type of bee that you have uh, would be a drone bee, and the drone is actually the male bee, and the big distinction, uh, they're, they're great big, uh, they, they're often a as long as a queen, but they're big and fat. Um, their whole purpose is to actually mate with the queen bee, okay? Um, they actually don't have a sting, so if you're getting intro into beekeeping, um, or if you're working with children, a lot of times it, it's the vibration that's kind of scary when you first get started. So if you are holding a drone, a male bee that has no sting, you're perfectly safe. It helps you get used to that vibration and reach a comfort level before you jump in. Okay. Uh, once a drone mates with a queen, they actually, there's an audible pop and then they die. So they have a good life, bad life. They don't have to do any work at all. That is their whole purpose, mate with a queen. Okay. The third type of bee that you have in a honeybee colony is your worker bee. And has anybody ever been stung by a honeybee? Yeah, it is a worker bee. I guarantee you that. Um, because actually, you know, you've probably heard that the queen bee, she like rules the hive, right? She's, she's the, the one in charge. And it is true to a certain extent, she is the most important bee, but I say she's more of a slave than a master because uh, as I said, her whole role is to lay eggs all day long. She only really gets to leave a bee colony after she hatches as an adult bee. She leaves to go do a mating flight. Typically it's just one time to mate with 13 to 15 drone bees. Um, if, if she can't find enough, she may do a second flight, but that's pretty rare. Um, but after that mating flight, she comes back to the colony 
and the rest of her life is you lay eggs all day long, right? And if the workers are happy with you, they're going to take care of you because a queen bee never actually even learns to feed herself. She is fully dependent on the worker bees to clean her, to feed her, okay? If she's doing a great job laying her eggs, they're going to take care of her. But if she gets old or has been damaged in any way, if she's not putting off good hormones, they're going to force her to lay an egg that they're going to raise into a new queen. And that new queen, once it hatches, is gonna go find our old queen and they have a stinging death match. It's usually the younger one. Um, and my experience has always been the younger one that wins out, okay? So good life, bad life, right? Kind of more slave than master. Um, another distinction that I wanna make sure I point out to you guys, most of the bees in a, a honeybee colony are female. So there are certain times of the year where there are no drone bees in a colony. The, a drone is only produced by a queen for mating for other colonies. She never mates with her own drones. So they don't do any work at certain times of the year, especially down here in the valley, summertime, where resources get scarce, a lot of the plants die off. The worker bees will actually kick the drones out of the colony. They say, nope, <laughs> you're done. And I, so they're going to typically only last a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, depending on weather. Uh, it, it's gonna be a situation where they say, you don't do any work, you're just gonna eat our resources, you're out. So eventually they're going to starve to death. Um, in other uh, areas where you have true winter conditions, the opposite is true. Winter time, you're done, you're out, okay? Um, all the worker bees are female. So most bees in a colony uh, are all female, okay? You have a queen bee who is putting off these hormones, pheromones, it actually suppresses reproduction in the worker bees, okay? So all females can lay eggs, but if you have a healthy queen, she can actually, because she goes out and she mates with drones and gathers that sperm. That's all the sperm she's gonna need for the rest of her life cycle, right? Um, the sperm, allows her to lay a female egg. It's, it's just opposite of kind of what, you, typically you think sperm equals male, but it's just opposite in honeybees, okay? So the worker bees, they don't do mating flights. They're not holding any sperm, right? So if they tried to lay an egg, they could, but it would be a, a drone egg, okay? Does that make sense? So if you have a healthy queen putting off good smells, those workers are gonna stay in check. They're not gonna try to lay any eggs. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, uh, so uh, another thing I want to point out when they're in development the queen gets the best of the best food that's where you're gonna get the royal jelly her entire development um, because she's their survival she needs to be big and strong healthy right the drones and the workers they get a little bit at the very beginning but then their diet changes right so um, the workers uh, are a little smaller for that reason they don't get the best food and uh, a bigger distinction is their sting. So a queen bee's sting is like a needle point. She can sting multiple times and not die. It's very rare that you would ever hear of somebody being stung by a queen bee. It's typically a beekeeper that is heavily messing with a queen. Uh, they save their stings for the stinging death match with other queens, okay? A worker bee, their sting is like half an arrow. It has a barb to it. So once she stings you, uh, and pulls away, it, it essentially rips the insides out, which is kind of gross, but that's why they can only sting one time and they die. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so a queen on average will live two to four years. That's pretty typical. Um, some beekeepers, uh, similar to chickens, that first year of egg laying is the best. So some beekeepers choose to replace their queens every single year. Um, me personally, I, I try to kind of follow what the hives are telling me. If I have a queen that's two years old and is doing great, I'm going to leave her in there. There's no reason for me to replace her, okay? Um, like I said, drones might be a couple weeks to a, a couple months, depending on weather. The worker bees will actually work themselves to death. So if there are a lot of flowers out there, they are working really, really hard. And you'll start to notice their wings kind of get tattered and torn and, and they just look a little mangled after a while. So they, they might live a couple weeks to a couple months. It's all dependent on weather and what is around. Um, bees actually will fly in a five mile radius as the crow flies. So um, even though we have a beautiful garden right here, uh, really easy access for them, 
they may still go to the neighbor's yard or, you know, a mile down the street. So just something to bear in mind. Uh, any questions before we move on? Okay. So um, our workers are, are truly the ones that, that actually control the hive. Uh, they have different jobs depending on how old they are. As soon as they hatch out as an adult, they're going to turn around. You need to get that honeycomb hexagon cell cleaned up. Get it ready for whatever's coming next. Maybe it's another egg. Maybe it's pollen or nectar, honey. Okay. Um, from there, they, they kind of graduate. They're, they're doing nursing tasks, taking care of the younger baby bees, uh, cleaning the queen, uh, feeding her as well, uh, keeping the, the larva warm. Okay. As they get a little older, different glands on their bodies are developing. Uh, they're going to be secreting the royal jelly, feeding that out. Uh, they are going to be in charge of when the resources are coming back to the colony. They're going to pass that off and then go put it away, store it away in the honeycomb. They may be in charge of building the wax. Um, it's a, a gland on their body. It's little flakes. And they kind of pack it together, similar to like Play-Doh. And they make that honeycomb. Uh, they may be a mortuary bee. So if a bee dies within the colony, they'll actually pick it up, take it out, and dump it to keep the hive clean. Um, eventually, they, they're going to potentially be a guard bee, guarding the entrance, because honeybee colonies steal from each other. So if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. If, they're, if you have a small colony next to a really big colony, instead of the big colony having to go gather all the nectar, convert it into honey, they say, well, or I could just brush back past your guard bees and steal the honey that's already done and just take it home. So um, in beekeeping, we, we always try to bear in mind if we have multiple colonies in close proximity, uh, we want to keep them fairly equal strength to avoid a lot of that and plenty of food. Usually it occurs when, when there's not a whole lot to pull from. Okay. Um, so eventually the last job of the worker bee is a forager. They're going to be going out gathering the nectar, the pollen, bringing it back. Um, so when they gather the nectar, um, it, it's actually swallowed and then regurgitated. Uh, and as it's regurgitated and passed off to the next bee, enzymes get mixed in. Uh, they don't have mouths or spit like we do, but for our purposes, think of it like humans, right? You regurgitate, a little spit gets mixed in, and that uh, the process is converting the nectar into honey, okay? Um, it's, it's liquid honey. It's really wet, so they actually have to dehydrate it down, bring the moisture content low. They do that one of two ways. They will slurp it up and spit it back out continually. Uh, and that process, again, they don't have mouths like we do. So spit is not getting added in, but enzymes will, okay? That will dehydrate it, or they'll actually fan it with their wings. Same basic process, remove the moisture content. And once it's at optimal uh, moisture level, they'll actually put a wax cap on top of it, and then you know it's good to go, okay? Questions on that? Okay, and um, I do have a, actually several honey frames. I'll, I'll pull them out in a second. Um, when, after this presentation, if you want to come up uh, to get an idea of how heavy honey is, uh, one, uh, uh, well, I'll just pull it now so it'll make sense. When I say a frame, I'm talking the the frame is this outer housing and then the foundation is where the honeycomb is. This is capped honey. It's at ideal moisture content that it's stored away for whenever they need it. Or if I, as a beekeeper, want to um, harvest that, I could, okay? This can weigh 10 pounds. So as a beekeeper, I have to bear in mind weight. It, it's a really big thing. So in a standard hive, there are 10 of these. So you think 10 for 10, and then your, your box, it gets a little heavy after a while. So some people choose to use smaller equipment, um, you know, eight frame, five frame, just to help manage that. Okay, I'm like, that's really heavy. Um, so basic beehive, just think of it kind of like a house. Your top, your middle, your bottom. Your top, your roof, keep the rain, the sun out. Your middle is like your rooms. You keep everything that's precious to you, all your, your babies, your, your pantry, your honey, all that stuff goes there. Your bottom is to help with ventilation, keep moisture and pests out. Okay, lots of different styles, but that's the gist on most beehive styles, okay? Um, this is old school, bee skep. 
We used to keep bees in these, but um, it's problematic to harvest honey out of it. You'd destroy all the honeycomb when you did it. So we've kind of shifted to more modern beekeeping styles. Okay, questions? Yes, ma'am. Connie, can you see the queen in, um, in there now? Um, she's in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger than the others? Yes, um, and I'll point her out. Um, I, I think we're out of time soon, but um, if you have questions about life cycles and stuff like that, it, it's I, I can address that after this presentation. Yes, ma'am. It looks like they're continually moving. They are. They're doing their jobs. So they all have different jobs. They're um, in this. Uh, we have eggs and larvae, pupa, all life phases. Um, they're just doing their job. There are different techniques to do it, but essentially he's talking, how do you harvest the honey? You remove the wax cap and take the honey out if you want to not damage the underlying honeycomb. Or some people choose to actually stamp it out and that's when you buy the comb honey. Um, it, it's literally just, here you go. It, it's everything that they've made. Actually eat the honeycomb itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that open? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, it just tastes like wax. It kind of like the old school candies, you oh, know? Okay. That, that's exactly what it is. Are beehives always wooden? No. Uh, beehives come in every, every material you can imagine, every shape, style, color and uh, barrels sometimes. There's no preference in color, right? No. Because they don't, they don't see in color. Oh, yeah. uh, they can they see color, they just can't see red. Um, yeah. Every beekeeper has a different opinion on that, I will say. I've heard that flowers, the reason okay. there's so many different colors and shapes of flowers, they don't see in color, they see in shade. Right. And it's like a little uh, uh, taxi light. Exactly. Okay. Uh, it's ultimately the workers decide this egg, is it going to be raised into a worker bee or a queen bee? And they have to decide at egg phase because of the royal jelly. Do we feed it the best of the best food the whole time or just a, a short portion of that time? Do they guard that? Do they, the rest of them guard that as the bee develops? Uh, no, they, they basically take care of it just like they would any of the other baby bees. How does that what sense? they collect affect how it takes the taste of it? So um, it, I brought these just to give you guys kind of an idea of um, different, well, he's got stickers on them. Um, so the pollen is what makes different flavors of honey, okay? These are all fairly similar in color. This is a cat's claw, wildflower, orange blossom. Um, but honey ranges from clear, like a black locust honey, all the way to so dark it's almost purple, like a buckwheat. Um, the flavor profile changes um, depending on the amount of pollen. Um, so as a beekeeper, I, I'm supposed to have predominantly one pollen in a five mile radius to say it's mesquite honey or orange blossom. Um, otherwise we say it's wildflower. We don't know, they're on anything and everything. Um, so people that have allergies, uh, we get these questions a lot. Um, if you know what you're allergic to, that's the, the honey you wanna try because you're trying to build up tolerance to that pollen. Uh, and that's why you want local right because it, it should be that pollen that is actually bothering you but um, bear in mind that honey versus pollen um, different potency so honey uh, uh, you can probably consume a little bit more if you are highly allergic take just a couple granules of pollen people get carried away like i'll take a tablespoon and they're going to have a huge allergic reaction uh, if you have really bad allergies allergies so we say start small and gradually build up to that so you don't have to break out the epipen you sure may. I did bring a few. So, um, and also I brought these, these are tasters. So I brought spoons as well. Uh, if you guys want to taste afterwards, that's kind of part of the fun. So, yeah. I have another question. As a bee farmer, can you go ahead and explain to the group, like uh, as a bee farmer, uh, you, you never think that bee is so strong, but you have weather, you have mites, you have uh, different uh, things that will attack the bee, right? Yeah. Um, you, weather plays a huge role. Um, there's always uh, potential mites, which is essentially like a tick for a bee. 
Uh, there are honeybee pests and diseases that come into play. So if you are managing colonies, these are things you have to bear in mind, things you have to watch out for. Uh, and there are different ways to mitigate things like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we gotta wrap up, but we'll talk more in, in a little bit. Thank you guys, appreciate it.